In this online lecture, we're going to see what it takes to be an aromatic molecule, which is basically this right here. For a molecule to be aromatic, it must meet two criteria. Number one, it must have an uninterrupted cyclic planar cloud of pi electrons, and two, must contain an odd number of pairs of pi electrons. Let me show you how to use these two things to verify if a molecule is aromatic. And let's do this. Let's start with the most famous aromatic molecule, benzene. Let's see if he meets these two criteria. Remember, number one, must have an uninterrupted cyclic planar cloud of pi electrons, and two, an odd number of pi electrons. First, let's fill in the hydrogens here that would be actually be on this molecule. And let's notice this first. If you looked at every single carbon within this benzene ring, you'll notice that every single one is doubly bonded and is also sb2 hybridized. This is very important that we see this. In fact, it's so important, let's just get a quick review of what it means to be sp2 hybridized in terms of what the orbital arrangements are. So for instance, let's say you have a carbon. He's sp2 hybridized. Remember, he has his 1s orbital, which is unhybridized. But then, remember, it's sp2 hybridized. So there's 1s and 2p orbitals that have been hybridized. And what we end up getting is three sp2 orbitals, one like this, one here, and one here like this. And remember, there's three p orbitals total to begin with. So what we have is one unhybridized p orbital like this. What we want to focus in is on that unhybridized p orbital there. Also, while we're looking at this, let's talk about another little vocab word here we should know is that if you are an electron in a p orbital, you are considered a pi electron. We'll see how he got his name in a few minutes. So let's go back to our molecule here. And let's take away our hydrogens here. And let's focus on this double bond right here. Remember, we also learned this before in a previous online lecture, what it takes to make a double bond. Well, remember, each carbon is sp2 hybridized in this ring. So this carbon right here has an unhybridized p orbital like this. And so does this carbon right here. And remember, each one has an electron in it, one here and one here. And if these electrons in these orbitals sideways overlap, you have what's called a pi bond. So notice that's why electrons in a p orbital are called pi electrons. Simply, they have the ability to create a pi bond. Notice, look at the double bond in the lower right. In order to make sense of him, it must be true that the two carbons right here must have two unhybridized p orbitals sideways overlapping. And this would also be true for the double bond on the left. Now remember, we're only showing the p orbitals. We're not showing all the other sp2 orbitals. But notice here, what you see in front of you is what's called an uninterrupted cyclic planar cloud of pi electrons. Notice this green circle here. We could connect all of these pi electrons together. And in doing so, it creates one big cloud. But notice, these are just the top lobes of the p orbitals. You could also say there's an electron cloud connecting the bottom lobes of the p orbitals. So benzene definitely has an uninterrupted cyclic planar cloud of pi electrons. Now, what about number two? It says it must contain an odd number of pairs of pi electrons. Well, let's look at the pairs here. This would be one pair of pi electrons. This would be another pair of pi electrons. And so would this. Notice that's a total of three pairs of pi electrons. So benzene also meets the second criterion. Therefore, he is considered an aromatic molecule. However, there's an alternative to the second criteria that some textbooks or professors use. And let's talk about that here. The other number two is that it has 4n plus 2 pi electrons, with n equaling any integers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. We should also understand how this one works. For instance, let me show you here. Our alternative criterion 2 is saying that there must be 4n plus 2 pi electrons. What this is is basically a formula. And if we plug in 0 for n, 4 times 0 plus 2 equals 2. Plugging in 1 for n, you get 6. Plugging in 2 for n, you get 10. 
If you plug in 3 for n, you get 14, and so on. You can keep going. Notice this formula is spitting out special numbers here, 2, 6, 10, and 14. So what we're saying here is that in order for a molecule to be aromatic, it must have either 2, 6, 10, 14, and so on pi electrons. So let's go back to our molecule and let me show you how this works. Again, let's put up our p orbitals here. And notice if you count, you would have 1 here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pi electrons. Notice, going back to our formula here, 6 is one of the numbers that the formula spits out. So that means benzene satisfies the second criteria. So you can use either one to figure out if a molecule is aromatic. So what are our key points here? Let's go back. How do we determine if a molecule is aromatic? Well, it must meet two criteria. Number one, must have an uninterrupted cyclic planar cloud of pi electrons. And two, must contain an odd number of pairs of pi electrons. Or remember, have 4n plus 2 pi electrons. You might be wondering at this point, how would this kind of material appear on an orgo exam? Well, we'll get to that a little bit later. There's more that we have to talk about here. Remember, this is just an introduction to show you what it takes to be aromatic. In other online lectures, we're going to look at many sample problems. And I'm going to show you how to quickly use these criteria to determine if a molecule is aromatic. Which means typical questions on an Origo exam are, your professor lists a collection of molecules and asks you which ones are aromatic. You have to go through each one and determine which one is aromatic. In order to do this, you need to understand these principles first, and then you need to see me do many examples.